So here's my uh, Ducati 797 Plus. This is the Plus model with the windscreen and actually I took off the uh, crowd, uh, seat crowd in the back, the passenger crowd. Uh, so this is a 2018. I, I bought this thing earlier, well, I think like two months ago. So, so earlier this year, back in March. So this uh, actually it's, it's, it's running on three months. So I think it's about three months now. So anyways, uh, again, 2018. And this thing, you know, when I bought it, it had less than a thousand miles on it. And it still has actually like only about a thousand miles on it. So 2018, I don't think the brake fluid's ever been bled. So normally uh, manufacturers for motorcycles, they usually say bleed the brakes every three, or excuse me, every two years. I like to do it every every year. Uh, um, and I do it after the raining season. So usually at the end of spring, early summer, I do it. Uh, and why I do it at that time is because uh you know rain is over so no more water to you know less water to get absorbed by the brake fluid and also you want to have fresh brakes for the summer season because everything is hot and when you're riding you know uh things everything gets hotter during summertime so brakes and everything gets hotter more likely for your uh if you get to that point more likely for your uh, brake fluid to boil over and such so fresh fluid is always nice uh and, and i can feel the difference uh some people might not notice the difference, but I feel the difference. Yeah, even even changing the fluid every year, I, there's a noticeable difference uh, in the in the level feel. When you know, when you're swinging the lever, it feels more um, it feels more responsive. It's a little bit firmer uh, than uh, than uh, than you know prior to uh, leading the brakes. And again, this is every year that I do it, and I and I, and I, I notice a difference. Some people might not again. Some people might not notice the difference, but I do. And if, if you, if I wait for two years, like the manufacturers usually recommend, man, I would definitely notice a difference. Uh, so I, I like, personally, I like to do it every year. Um, but you know, but again, you, you could do it every two years, but this thing's been what four years now, since this is 18 and it's 22 right now. So it's uh, been four years, so I'm gonna do this. Um, so how I have my setup here, I have my, my uh, I have the bleed, bleed, uh, the bleed uh, bolt here to the hose to the catch, right? And I'm using dot four, dot four brake fluid, and I buy dot four because that's what the man manufacturer recommends. And you look up here, right there. I don't think you guys can see it, but right there it says dot four on it, dot four uh, brake fluid. Um, so dot four, you can also use dot five point three. I mean, excuse me, five point three. I mean five point one as well. But there's no reason to use that and, you know, unless you're racing, unless you're uh, unless you're doing the track days where it gets really hot. Then, because the, the the difference between the different dots, especially the boiling temperature, the higher the, the dot goes up, the higher the boiling temperature it has. So, so for street use, you would never need any more than dot four. You know, uh, track use on the other hand, you might need a five point one. Um, but dot four is cheaper. You know, I could get this the thirty two ounce bottle at Walmart for a lot cheaper than if I were to buy a 5.1 because 5.1 you have to go to like a specialty shop motorcycle shop or a performance shop uh, to get 5.1 and 5.1 it will be the bottle will be half the size of this bottle and the cost will be at least double if not triple the cost of this bottle so you so it's so it costs a lot more no sense in in um, paying for something that you're not going to use right uh, so anyways got my little eight millimeter I think oh uh, yeah eight millimeter box wrench in here Got my hose on there. I have a little uh, zip tie so that way the hose doesn't uh, pop off easily. Uh, need to take off the uh, cap here. So I have a, a you know t-shirt rag whatever cover covering the uh, where the uh, reservoir is because you don't want any fluid to spill out, spill out. If it does spill out, you want to catch it right away and not get onto your basically your paint because brake fluid is corrosive and it will eat through the paint. And this bike is, you know, the paint job on this bike is so nice that, you know, you don't want to do that. Um, so, I'm trying to do this with one hand. The thing I hate about. She's kind of stuck in there because the thing has never been, I don't think, it's, think this thing has ever been removed. So, I was kind of tight. Okay, so there's the cap itself. It's a little bit wet, so that's, that's moisture from the, uh, from the um because uh, brake fluid is um that's moisture from from brake fluid absorbing water 
brake fluid is uh, hydro, hydroscopic, so it likes to absorb water. So this is obviously the clean side, and it's all wet right here. You guys can see the water, all the moisture there. That's, that's all water. That's because whatever residue brake fluid that's, that, that was here, it absorbed that whatever water. Uh, so that's, that's where they come from. And underneath is obviously going to be the brake fluid. And it's kind of hard to tell because everything's black, but this brake fluid is definitely uh, dark. It's a little bit on the dark side, so, um, so it tells me it's old. Brake fluid, when it's when it gets older, it, it's uh, uh, it, it gets darker. As it gets used, it gets darker. Uh, so I'm going to wipe off the top of this uh, reservoir here. That way around the rim of it it's nice and dry so that way hopefully nothing spills out right have a little bit of fluid on the on the along the rim there it could spill on the side and, and uh drip down and all of a sudden the side of your reservoir starts to uh lose its paint or the paint starts peeling off because you got brake fluid there all right so i'm there i'm good i'm good there now down here how you what you do down here is uh, or how you do this or how I do this is when I release this uh, uh, bleed valve what I, what I do is I squeeze oh shit god damn I just you see you see the food just popped out because this thing doesn't have a, a cover on it and when the, the nature of how brake fluid works is that when you uh, squeeze or on the, on the calipers there's a tendency there's another little cap down there uh, the break, some of the brake fluid will actually shoot back up and actually some of it shot up and I need to wipe off this little bit of mountain here. Good thing that it shot forward and not back into the gas, into the, onto the gas tank. So the rest of it's on the floor here, you can see it's all wet right there. So anyways, what I do is I squeeze, right, squeeze here. And, I, and you have to do this slowly, if you squeeze too fast, the brake fluid will, will eject up again. You can see the brake fluid coming up, so let's do it slowly. Hold, hold the lever, right? the lever that down here you open this up and the brake fluid will come out what you want to do is before the brake fluid stops coming out you want to close this back up and basically you can feel the lever as, as you squeeze the lever like that and you open this up right here the lever will bottom out you know so just before it bottoms out uh close it up and the reason why you want to close it up before it bottoms out and before the brake fluid stops coming out is just in case uh, uh because of the bottom the bottom of the bleed bolt right here that's the spot where possibility of air can could enter. So if you stop it uh, before uh, before the brake fluid is coming out, you will eliminate that possibility. Okay. So and so shut that off once once you uh, uh, close this up back up again. This wrench, that that meter, then you can release the the brake lever here. And once you release this, you could pump this thing a few times. You know the first time you do it, it's gonna bottom out uh, because you know, because you uh, there wasn't any pressure built up back in there, so you pump it a few times to build up the pressure again, then hold it, then release this again, and you just keep on repeating that. And I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm probably gonna do it enough times where I will refill this reservoir probably uh, three times. Uh, that should be enough, maybe even four times, because because this thing does have ABS, so the fluid here will pump to the ABS pump, then from there it it goes to the the calipers. Um, because of that ABS pump, it it you know it's an extra extra line basically, so it takes a little bit longer, so it takes more res more fluid, so you have to refill this a few more times and do it cycle through a few more times in that for that reason. Uh, but also at the same time, with the ABS pump that's in here, it's, it's somewhere it's either underneath the seat or underneath the gas tank or somewhere in here. The thing is that ABS pump it's closed, uh, so you can't get the fluid from from the inside the ABS pump out, and which is fine, you know. That's not that, you know, it's not that important, especially if you do this often, it's not that important um, to get all, all that old brake fluid out of the ABS pump. So as long as your lines are all cleaned up, as you ride the bike and, and you activate the ABS and it pumps through, some of that old fluid will mix with your, your new fluid and it will dilute the old fluid, right? So it's, so that old fluid that's in the pump will, be, will become a little bit newer, a little fresher. And, and if you bleed the brakes like I do every year, you never have to worry about that, that fluid in the ABS getting really old because it's, it's always kind of like diluted out with the new, the new, uh, newer pressure fluid. All right. 
So let's, let's do this. I'll get this started. Let's see if I can position away where you guys can see with the camera. All right, so as you're bleeding through, one of the, th one of the things you have to watch out for, so I put the reservoir uh, accordion seal back on so that way the brake fluid when you know when it shoots up and you squeeze the lever here and it shoots up uh, it doesn't shoot out so actually let's look at this real quick so you see how the reservoir is low shine a light here. so you see how it's low you you don't want to get lower than say um, five millimeters of brake fluid, and the reason for that is if you look at it really carefully, you see there's just, there's two holes. There's a hole on the left side and a hole in the middle. Um, when you squeeze the brake fluid through, because that, those holes are still open as initially when you first squeeze the brake brake lever, if the, if the level gets too low, it will actually suck in. Uh, air because it because it's you know it sucks in pretty quickly, so it's sucking air and you get air you will get air into your line. Um, so actually, let me uh, see if I could do this with one hand. Uh, shit, nope, can't do it with one hand. Dang it. Anyways, um, you see how how the brake fluid squirts out in the middle hole, and when you release the brake fluid, brake lever. Uh, uh, some of the fluid that, that was that squirted out will get sucked back in, and if the if the level gets too low, it will suck in air. So so that's the point. Is, is don't get the level too low when you're doing this. Otherwise, you'll suck in air. Okay. So that's about as low as I want to go. Now I'm gonna basically fill the top this thing back up again, and I'm gonna uh, uh, bleed it back down again. Then I should be good for for this side. So this thing has, obviously has, has two calipers. So right now I'm doing the first caliper. The you know, the line that's coming down right here is where it's you know where it's coming from. This line right here is coming down from here. It it comes down here to the first caliper, and there's another line that comes from the same spot that comes back up and it goes over to the, the to the second caliper. So usually when you bleed brakes, it's best to bleed them from the far side first, then to the close side. But uh, this in this case I did the front side first because. Uh, uh, I think I'll be fine, uh, no big deal. Because, um, you know, again, I'm not introducing any any air or nothing like that, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have to worry about, uh, you know, introducing air into there. The problem with, with this type of brake line, and pretty much all bikes that have to do with this will have this type of brake line set up where the line comes down and another line goes over, up around the fender usually. The problem with this design is that if air gets into this second line here that goes over the fender, it tends to stay up in up in this arch, the top of this arch, and it's very difficult to get rid of that. Um, uh, sometimes you might go through a whole entire bottle of brake fluid, and you could never you still can't get rid of that that air that's up in here. So that's why it's very important to to not get um, air in the system at all. Okay.